totally fine to be on your phone. Uh, that works for me. Um, yeah, so I yeah just happened to be reading the real the Veil Daily, and I saw the story about the the new um, bear technique. And uh, I'm the staff writer for a website called Adventure.com. So we write about hiking, trail running, winter sports. So lots of activities where people end up needing your services. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Um, so I thought they might be really interested in, in reading about this and I, you know, I'm personally interested too, but um, sure. yeah, so uh, the article that I read, you know, did, did a pretty good job of explaining it all, but I wonder, you know, for the sake of the interview, in your own words, in layman's terms, if you could describe a bit what the process entails, um, the, the technique entails. Sure. Yeah, I mean, um, as, as, as you know, uh, for AC, ACL injuries are very common in uh, particularly skiing, but in soccer and uh, other cutting and pivoting sports. And um, historically, we've always had to do a reconstruction where we we take a piece of tendon and um, place it in the knee and secure it to the femur and the tibia in place of the torn ACL. But in, in recent years, there's been more attention and interest in trying to repair one's native ACL that's torn. And um, at, now for about five or six years, I've been able to uh, it's not really the bear technique, although the bear is kind of an extension of of, of this technique, but in, in tears where the ACL can kind of pull off the femur instead of being torn right in the middle, um, I've been able to secure it to the bone and get it to heal quite well, much like a, a rotator cuff repair or any tendon repair. Uh, it's similar. And, uh, and, and the results have been really encouraging. And the nice thing with those repairs is that the recovery is quicker, quicker. It's it's less invasive. We're not harvesting a tendon and having to drill sockets in the bone and all that. Um, and so the bear technique is maybe an extension of a repair. Um, but the thought is that, you know, can we actually place the um, the implant in those mid-substance ruptures? Uh, and, and the reason being that, um, you know, mid-substance ruptures, in the old days, we would try to sew those together, but uh, the biology wasn't such that the ligament could heal itself well because our joint is a fluid-filled environment. So um, it would just wash away uh, any kind of healing cells that might migrate to the zone of injury to try to get a ligament to, to heal. Whereas, you know, outside your joints where there's good blood supply um, around a muscle, let's say, things can heal quite well, primarily, you know, back together, whether it be your, for instance, your MCL or um, another ligament elsewhere around your body. Um, so the bear is interesting in that, you know, can we actually get ACLs to heal uh, for, for tears that are within the middle of the ligament? And uh, I don't think we're there quite yet, um, but, um, but there is some encouraging data coming out uh, regarding the bear. Um, I, uh, and I, and, and in my own practice, again, I think it's, it's just more of an extension of, of, of these rep ACL repairs that I've been doing, um, where, where we secure it to the bone, but now we're trying to see if we can cheat that down a little bit. And for tears that are farther down, which are more common, can we possibly get those to heal primarily? Wow. Wow. Okay. So have you, I think I read in the article that you had performed at least one of these. Is that, is that right? Yes, yes. And, and so, um, and I'm, I'm honestly being a little bit conservative here. I mean, I would say a lot of surgeons around the U.S. at least are, are not really doing ACL repairs. And, and I've been very comfortable and, and have kind of developed my technique to do those over the last five, six years. And I probably have a series of maybe even 60 patients or so that have had a primary repair. And, uh, and, and the majority have done very, very well. And, um, and so uh, now with the bare implant, you know, I, I, in this one patient, for instance, she had a tear that was a little farther down her ligament and, and we did the repair, but we basically placed this collagen sponge, which is this bare implant in that defect in the hopes that um, it can capture, you know, healing cells that can hopefully heal the ACL back together. And how long ago was, was that? Uh, her case, I want to say, was about three months ago, four months ago, and uh, and I've had you know other repairs, you know, quite a few repairs since then, and um, you know, playing around with, it, it, do we need some sort of um, almost like gap filler? Do we need some kind of collagen sponge to place in those gaps? Uh, and uh, oftentimes we, I don't, you know, because the the ligament I can I can take and just where it's ripped off the bone, just 
basically I, I, we microfracture the bone. So we poke little tiny holes in the bone to get the stem cells bleeding from the bone. And then we have these very strong and very small um, suture anchors or other material that we use to suture the ligament back to the bone. And, uh, and, and so, but sometimes, you know, if, if there's still a gap and, and I can't really get the ligament back to the bone, then I would use the, I would use a bare implant. Okay. Um, and, and so far she's doing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, you know, she is, you know, the, the, the bare patient, uh, you know, is doing fine and my other repairs are doing fine. I just, there's a study gonna, that's going to be, that's ongoing right now. And it's um, randomizing patients to um, get a bear versus a typical ACL reconstruction. And I'm kind of uh, honestly waiting for that those results to come out before I really start to maybe push the envelope and use the bear for mid substance ruptures because, um, uh, the, for instance, it, it's Dr. Martha Murray is her name and she's a pediatric orthopedist and she, she developed the bear with her team. Um, the only thing that gives me pause is that she primarily works with kids, you know, and, uh, so in a, in a 12 year old boy or, uh, let's say, you know, 11 year old girl, um, or a teenager, even, uh, um, you know, I think I'd say, I say kids are kind of like salamanders, you know, they heal anything. So I'm a little worried that in an adult, are we going to see those same healing rates? Or are we going to see high failure rates? So just with my own patients, I'm, I'm reluctant to, um, fully jump in, uh, for mid substance ruptures. I am again, healing, uh, you know, doing the repairs, for, for uh, avulsions or higher tears of the ACL where it comes directly off the femur. Mm. Yeah, so you want to be, you obviously want to be cautious. So for right now, would you say the procedure is something you might only consider for those higher tears then? Yeah, I would say I'm still sticking with pretty much those higher tears. And, and in those cases, either just doing a repair or if we can't quite get the ligament back to the bone, then we would use a bare implant to put in that interface. But I haven't yet really gone to um, placing it in the typical ACL tear, which is a mid substance rupture and just so suture it in, in the defect. I haven't yet, I wanna wait for these results to come out before I you know, subject a patient to that without, uh, you know, I hate to have them go through still a sizable surgery and recovery and then have it fail prematurely. And then we're back to doing maybe a reconstruction. Yeah. So. Beyond the obvious, or not obvious, but beyond the typical risks of surgery, are there any additional risks you can think of with this technique versus a typical? Well, yeah, the, the one thing that gives me a little bit of concern is that um, this implant is quite large. It's you know probably um, three, four centimeters by centimeter and a half or so. And um, in, in, in the, uh, you know, sometimes in those cases, if you're if you're placing it, you have to use the whole implant per the technique at least, and and uh, I worry a little bit could that cause some arthrofibrosis, basically some scarring uh, in the notch where the ACL lives because there's not a lot of room for the ACL, and uh, um, my concern is that it, maybe you get some scarring and adhesions and what's called a cyclops lesion where you basically get a big scar ball right in the notch and it impinges and causes pain. And then you have to go back into the knee and remove it later on down the road. So, um, that's, a, that's another thing that gives me a little bit of a concern is the implant is literally so large. And, uh, I, I, I actually have talked to the company about, can I, you know, decrease the size of it, like take a third off of it, you know, for, for, if I don't need that much in the little gap, can I just use, and they said that's an off label use. So you're mm -hmm. kind of, you're kind of stuck using the whole thing, I guess. Although, it, you know, I think if you've discussed it with a patient and say, Hey, I'm only, are you okay with me using a portion of this? I think most patients would say, you know, use your judgment. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You removed my cyclops lesion, so <laughs> I know all yeah. about that subject. It's definitely not something you want if you can avoid it. <laughs> I know exactly. So, right, um, but I think it. I think all of it is is um, you know really uh, great for patients in, you know who have had ACL tears and are active, young and active like yourself, um, because um, there's the potential that that we can save one's anatomy and. Um, not be as invasive and get them back to their activities even faster. Yeah, I suppose that was that was probably my final question. I mean, you've, you've kind of touched on this, but in my mind, 
you know, one of the, the most difficult parts of healing from my original ACL surgery was that I had also then had a surgery on my hamstring tendon. So it's almost right. like you're having two surgeries and it's really difficult to recover. So that's the main thing I think that you're eliminating potentially with this. Right. Yeah. You, you know, there is the, the, the graft site morbidity and people with, you know, hamstring graft is a good graft. I definitely much more of in a favor of using one's own tendon versus a donor tendon for reconstruction. It's just, it becomes a living tissue in your knee and, uh, and there's much lower retear rates than if we use a donor tendon. Um, and, and for all those reasons, using an autograft, your own tendon is a better option. But like you allude to, you have to recover from the, the harvest site and, and that takes a long time. And uh, so, yeah, if we can shorten that period and maybe not have to use one's tendon, that that's exciting. Yeah, it'd be amazing. Um, oh, and I wanted to ask how roughly, do you know how many ACL surgeries you perform each year? It's definitely over uh, over 100. I would say 100, 120 a year. Um, and uh, we, you know, obviously largely in the winter months from about December through April or so, um, we're, we're starting to come to the end, end of ACL season right now, but, uh, you know, in the wintertime, it's not unusual to have four or five a week. Wow. Oh. Yeah. And a big snow year too, I've heard you're having, so it's probably been a busy, busy winter for you. Uh, yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, and I've, I've torn my own ACL and, and that's honestly in, in, in probably in large part, what propelled me into orthopedics, you know, when I was yeah. 17 and playing soccer. So yeah, yeah it, it's a common injury. Yeah, I didn't realize that. <clears throat> um, all right. Well, those were all my questions. Did you have sure. anything that you should add or I didn't ask that I should have? No, I think I think those are, um, you know, all uh, uh, yeah, what we should cover. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, like any, the only thing I uh, would, would also say is just like any orthopedic um, advancement or technology, you know, having been in practice now for 20 years, um, you know, you kind of see some excitement build over a given technique or a given technology. And then three years late and everyone's starting, you know, maybe jumps on the bandwagon. And then, and then three years later, you find that no one's talking about it anymore because no one's doing it anymore because the results weren't very good. And so I'm definitely tiptoeing my way into this, although the repairs, I, I'm a firm believer in and, and, um, and I honestly, you know, that, that still is quite rare in the knee world, knee surgeon world. A lot of docs are not doing repairs, but so I, I think the bear could add to this, but I'm, I'm treading, you know, I'm still not yet again. I, I think caution is, is um, warranted so that we're making the best decisions for patients. So. Okay. I will make sure to emphasize that in the article. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but I would say um, that some patients, unfortunately, I, I see, you know, I've looked back at their MRI and they have an MRI where they really have pulled it off the bone and they've maybe had surgery elsewhere. They've had a full reconstruction. And, you know, in hindsight, I, I, I would probably have done a repair in those cases. And, um, and now they're having problems from the reconstruction. So reconstructions do well, but certainly they're not trouble free. And, mm. uh, um, and so, gosh, if we can, you know, just, um, move more people toward a repair and, and avoid some reconstructions and therefore some complications associated with those. Um, I think that's definitely a win. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It can help a lot of people. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. Great to catch up and yeah. hope you're doing well. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, spring is, very slow to come here. Are you guys starting to finally warm up a little bit? Or? It's warming up a little. The bluebells are out. So usually yeah. once bluebell season comes, it's properly spring. So we're, you know, it's it's spring flower season, but we didn't have much snow. I mean, I skied um January 2nd. And then other than going to Switzerland, there's been no ski, there's been no snow. So <laughs> but it's oh, been really? okay. you know, you can hike year round here. So yeah. I, I quite like that. So how much snow would be a typical year, would you say? Um, um, it's hard to say. I mean, up in the highlands, there will always be snow. But, you know, lots of years here, you know, in the city, we could get we could get none at all. OK. Um, okay. It really depends. Yeah. But uh, I mean, we could, probably could have chased the snow a little more. But yeah, we had a great. I thought it was going to be brilliant at the beginning of the year. And nothing since. But <laughs> I've just okay. moved on. I'm hiking and running. 
<laughs> no, good. Yeah. Great. Well, um, great to catch up. I'm glad you're doing well. Yeah, it's good to catch up. And uh, I, I'm I'm away. You know, we're off tomorrow for the Easter, and then I'm actually away next week. But um, the week after that, I'll I'll get the article up and I'll send it along to you and your team in case you want to use it for anything. That'd be great. I appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, I I wonder if also I'm I'm not that tech savvy, but uh, I'm wondering if um, if even our our interview today, I could post like if people are interested in you know because these are some of the questions I get every day in the office, and we've kind of summarized some of the key points. And uh, um, I don't know if you if you recorded it and wanted to send it my way, I might just see if there's I have to talk to someone who's more tech savvy than me about how to how to you know yeah. but but or i could actually just post your article i suppose that's that's obviously fine too that, that yeah answers. well i can send along the link to this video and um yeah you're welcome to do whatever you'd like with it so you know feel free to just chop it up and just use sections you know you have it so if i send the link someone should be able to just download it and then do whatever they want that so that's no problem great okay yeah. well yeah if not just yeah your article will be fine too so great well okay well julia have a nice uh, spring yeah, you too. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.